everyone. How are you doing tonight? Um, that's a loaded question. I'm going to ask you that right now. Hi, everybody. My name is Tracy. Uh, I am the owner of Tracy's Fancy, and I'm a brand ambassador for Dixie Bell Paint Company. And I am coming to you live tonight. I come to you live every Wednesday night um, right here on Dixie Bell's main page from San Antonio, Texas. Coming to you live from San Antonio. Um, we is, what's, what are you shaking your head for? Uh, we got bumped off the internet, but we're back. <sighs> Isn't that annoying? Somebody's here, just happens. Oh man, are you serious? Hmm. Got 82 people on. I Hi need. everyone, sorry, Matt. Matt's here tonight. We've got Matt in the house. Woo -woo. Hi guys. Uh, he's here and he says we've already glitched twice on the internet and I have no idea why. We don't even have anyone else home and we've got all of our internet off. So bear with me. I'm not going anywhere unless it kicks us off and we're gone, but we're going to move forward. We are talking about basics tonight because I have this beast behind me. Matt, you want to just tilt up and down so that they can see that it's not only just this uh, buffet part, but it's also a hut, a china hut. This is legit early American style, right? At its finest. Um, it's Ethan Allen. It's got a beautiful Ethan Allen stamp on the inside. Baby, get me a screwdriver. I'm going to use it. Uh, so I decided last night that this was a perfect project to get on here and talk about some basics. So what is it when we mean, uh, when we say, uh, do a test spot or what is bleed through anyway? Okay. Well, we talk about what bleed through is. We tell you what bleed through is, but do we ever really walk you through the testing, the testing phase because it's pretty boring, um, but it has to be done and I would have to do it because you saw this piece, right? Um, can they not see my head? Sorry. <laughs> it was a bad hair day. Um, also, I got right into my project because I didn't want to talk too much tonight because I want to really make sure we get through all these steps. Um, you need please. your mic. It's on. Oh, point it the other way maybe? Please say hello. Maybe it's not clipped in well. Clip the both connections. Oh, that was probably it. Is that it? There yep. we go. Better. Uh, please say hello when you come on and let me know things like I can't hear you or we can't see you. Uh, we're a tight knit community here. We're a, a very open arms Dixie Bell family. Um, we would love to know if you're new to Dixie Bell. We'd love to know if you don't have a clue what I'm talking about. If you're a retailer for Dixie Bell, we have retailers across the country. Please stay where you are, where your shop is. Let people know that you're here. Um, if you are someone who's interested in trying a Dixie Bell chalk mineral paint product, there are a gazillion items that you can try um, from the basics that we're going to talk about tonight all the way up to some flashy, blingy things that you can do to your project as well. Uh, if you'd like to see those in person, you can go to a local retailer. Um, you can go to DixieBellPaint.com and put your zip code into the uh, zip code finder or retailer finder and it'll tell you where a retailer is near you. I am a Dixie Bell brand ambassador. I have an affiliate link, so I also can offer you the ability to order paint online. The, my affiliate link is at the top of this video, and if you wanna try anything that we talk about tonight, um, you can just click that link and go over and, and order some products. They do offer only $10 shipping for anything over $50. It doesn't matter how much you order, your shipping will be a flat $10 rate, as long as you order $50 or more product. Okay. That's enough of that. Let's show you how some things work. Um, do we have any questions, babe? No questions yet. Just a bunch of hellos from all over the country and the world, actually. And somebody was here from Nigeria. Yes, yes. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you for being here. And thank you for telling me where you're tuning in a from. Ask them if the audio is better. Is the audio better, you guys? Can you hear better? Jerry D. Westner wants to be in your video. Oh, they do that. They do that accidentally. Okay. They push like those little buttons. Matt hasn't filmed for me for a while, so I'm really thankful that he's... <clears throat> that he's here tonight. Um, okay, so this piece was my client's uh, mom's. Her mom passed away recently. Very, very, uh, I mean, you know, you lose your mom. It's a painful, painful loss. Um, and they had a huge estate sale. And, you know, they, you keep a lot of things. It's hard to let everything go. And she said, you know, this Ethan Allen piece, she could remember it her whole life. Her mother loved it. And she said, I it's something I just think that I might could make it into something that I really like. So she has sent me many inspiration photos, and guys, guess what? They're all white. Everything is white. So I'm gonna eat crow today. When I told y'all last time that I did a solid white piece because I'm a color lover, I rarely use white, um, unless it's a black and white stripe or a black and white check, I said I wasn't gonna do a solid white piece anymore. The reason that I'm willing to do this for my sweet friend is because she wants it 
totally shabby chic and I love shabby chic. So the last white piece that I did was a very clean, super clean lines. Um, uh, they wanted, you know, like factory type finish. This one's going to be shabby chic. So we're going to be able to paint this thing and just sand it to sand it to death. I mean, just like bring through the wood and it's going to be a really, really fun, fun look. Um, she loves the lady from Turtle Creek Lane. Is that what that's called in Dallas? I'm sure lots of y'all probably follow her. Uh, she loves her style, very fresh and lively with like pastel plates and serving dishes that are very, uh, have a lot of energy and a lot of um, happiness. And that's what she wants for this piece. So she wants it solid white and heavily distressed, very charming cottage shabby chic. So I think we can do that for her. And that is why I bring to you today the basics because we're going from this bleed through probably like crazy, lots of stain, lots of years of oil and grime and furniture polish um, to white. It's a painter's nightmare, right? So I'm gonna take you there with me. Misery loves company. I'm gonna take you there with me. So the very first thing I did, she had already cleaned it already. So she brought it to me, it was spotless. Not even, there wasn't even dust on it. She's so proud of it. It, it, it was spotless. So I was like, oh, that looks really clean, but I'm gonna go ahead and, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a good shower with white lightning. White lightning right here, it is a TSP with an, a, with an addition of some uh, proprietary products that they have put together to make a really, really good cleaning solution. For years, I used vinegar and water and um, thought I was doing a good job. This one had already been cleaned and this is what I got off of it today. Guys, this was a bright white cloth. Does it look, can you see how dirty this cloth Yeah, is? it's really nasty and I think it's part of that cigarette smoke. No, I don't. Oh, you don't? This doesn't smell like cigarette smoke. I know that, I think that ashtray might have been used for incense. Oh, okay. There's an ashtray on the inside, but it doesn't, I smelled it. It doesn't even smell like cigarette smoke. It smells like an incense. So that's what I think this was used for. Um, I don't think so. I think this is wood tannins and years of polish. That's what I think. So yeah. my white lightning got this off. Here's the, here's the little ashtray. You can see like where one little thing set. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't, it doesn't smell like, I hate cigarette smoke. That's brave of you. It, does, <laughs> it doesn't smell like that. Well, I wanted to know what I was up against. You need to know what you're up against, right? Yeah. So, um, what I do is I mix my white lightning into a bottle like this. I just put like a teaspoon of it in this bottle. I shake it up really good and I give it a shower all the way from the very top of the piece. I just walk all the way around it and I just douse the entire thing. It's running and dripping all the way down into my drop cloth. And I go back with a green scrubby, like a scotch Bright scrubby pad, and I just scrub all through it. I just want to let this kind of eat through any grime that's on there, and I just scrub the entire thing, and then I start wiping off, and I, this is what I got off. Okay, so then, after that's done, I let that dry, and then I come back with just straight water, because you cannot leave white lightning on your piece. If you leave white lightning on your piece, you may have an adhesion problem where the paint won't stick to the piece because it, the white lightning is doing its job. It's trying to take things off of the furniture, not let you put things on the furniture. So now you have to clean it with water. So this is straight water. It says, looks like a Jack Daniels bottle, but it says straight water. Um, one of my good friends and Facebook uh, followers sent this. <coughs> I love it. So I also started at the top and I gave it a whole nother shower from the top to the bottom. I just doused it with water and I went back with a second rag and this is what I got. Now this still looks pretty gross, um, but it's much better than this rag. Much better. It's still much better. Uh, so still coming off. This is telling me that I'm probably going to have a bleed through issue, you guys. Big hints right here. So then I went back with a couple more layers of water, I just used paper towels. I did that on purpose so I could show y'all. Um, cleaned it off with paper towels and it's done, it's ready to go. So, what do we do? Well, you need to make some decisions. This is you, just pretend I'm you. I've walked up into my garage, I've cleaned my piece, I'm new to painting, and I'm like, man, I don't, those girls on Dixie <clears throat> Bell, they talk about all kinds of things. What? What product do I use first? Am I supposed to use Slick Stick? I mean, it feels slick. Am I supposed to use Boss? Or do I use Boss Clear? Do I use Boss White? Or do I use Boss Gray? I'm so confused. 
Okay, well, you need to know where you're going. What is your end result that you're looking for? Well, I know that this time I'm going for a shabby chic, super distressed, not fancy, cottage beachy vibe. All right, that's important for me to know that. Sherry says clear, clear boss. Clear boss, okay. We're gonna talk about that. There's gonna be a lot of talking right now. And this there, this is why, because look, and then now we and then next we gotta cover what's up there. You have it's remember how Brandy but brush by Brandy made a flow chart for Dixie Bell. It starts at the top. What are you doing? What do you want? Which color are you gonna use? And it showed like all it was like this flow chart. So we're talking our way through that right now. So Sherry says clear boss, and I would agree with Sherry if I were going to put color on this piece. So if I were going to paint this piece in Stormy Seas, which is a beautiful deep steel gray, if I were going to paint this piece in Stormy Seas and I were going to distress it and bring wood back, I would use clear boss. Now boss is a primer. Let's start, let's go back with boss. Boss is a primer. It blocks odors, stops stains, and bleed through. So if this piece smelled like nicotine, I'd given it a good cleaning. I could literally cover this from top to bottom, inside out. Yes, if something smells like nicotine, open this up. If you don't want to cover up the wood on the inside, use your clear boss. You can see through it. You put it on there and it's like skin. It, it makes a clear skin and it blocks that smell inside the wood. It doesn't let it seep out of the wood anymore. But yet it dries clear and no one even knows that you've done it. It reminds me of like new skin that you put on instead of a band-aid. You know, I'm a band-aid there, you just have like new skin on. That's what it reminds me of. Okay, so but we're not doing the inside. Uh, so that this is what boss does. So they make it in clear for many reasons. One is to do the insides of drawers, to do the insides of cabinets, and also to allow you to do clear on the outside if you really want to distress back and bring a wood color through. So if we were gonna use stormy seas or red or hot pink or turquoise, <coughs> I would use clear boss because I'm gonna distress. What would happen if you used white boss? Let's say you used white and then you used hmm. gray. What was that noise for? Sorry, I was clearing my throat. Okay, <laughs> uh, let's say you use white boss and then you use stormy seas on top of it. Great, that's great, that's a great blocker. Works great, stormy seas on top of it. But if you sand back stormy seas to expose wood, you're not gonna just expose this dark, dark wood. You're gonna expose a white boss primer that's underneath there as well, and we call that a halo. So you would sand it, and you would have wood, and then you would have a ring of white, and then you would have where you're, a ring that starts your stormy seas color. So if you're gonna distress and you, you're painting with a color, do not prime with a white boss. Can you decoupage on top of a clear boss? Yes, absolutely. You sure Shirley can. is asking. Shirley, that's a good question, and yes, you sure can. Uh, gray boss, we don't really need to talk about that right now. Gray boss is a primer that you would use if you were, uh, were going to paint with like red or orange or maybe a teal or something like that. But since we're using white, uh, we really can just choose right now if we're just going to use clear or white. Well, I'm not going to use clear because I can use white. Because guess what? White boss under white paint looks like white. And then when I do a sand back, it's I'm not still not going to have halo. It's just going to expose expose um, wood, and it won't show that halo because it's white on white. Why wouldn't I just use clear boss? Because I'm going to be honest. Sometimes if you have a really heavy bleeder, the clear boss is not as hard, it's, it's not like your heaviest army against a bleed through. And I'm being completely honest. Sometimes you can use clear boss and, and you can use a second coat of clear boss and you're still getting bleed through and you can put a white boss on and it'll stop it. Sometimes you can put white boss on and you get bleed through and you need another coat and sometimes you maybe need three coats, but you're finally will stop your bleed through. Um, so because I, what those rags look like, I'm not going to use a clear boss. I'm not taking the chance. I've got white boss on hand. I'm just going to use it. So let's do some test spots because that's what we tell you and that's what I think people don't see enough of. People say, oh, just do a test spot. Well, it's more than just putting some paint on the door. So we are gonna do that though. We're gonna use, I'm gonna use fluff for this. Fluff is my favorite white. Dixie Bell has two whites. There are, well, oh my gosh, what am I saying? Dixie Bell has a ton of whites. 
but there are two really true whites and one is cotton and it's it's more of a clinic, I call it a clinical white, like a hospital white. Um, and then there's fluff, and fluff is more, uh, they say it has gray undertones, it's just a softer white, like it's like it sounds, fluff, it's like marshmallow fluff. Um, so, any questions, Faith? No questions. Are you serious? No I, one I, has any questions? Well, about the clear boss, but. Yeah, how about comments? Uh, because normally I'm talking to them. People say hello. They're coming in from Germany, from England, from Nigeria, yes. from uh, from Okinawa. Okinawa. Who's here from Okinawa? Brody. Oh, Brody. Hi, baby. <laughs> my son. My son Brody is in Okinawa. Thanks, sunshine, for being anyway, here. There's so many people saying hello that I can't keep up. There's oh, 138 so people on. I love yep. everybody. Thank Kathleen you Rose. Oh, hi, Kathleen. Hi, baby. Good to see you. Um, thank you very much for being here, you guys. And y'all know, push that share button if you think you've got someone new to painting that would like to see some of this information. All right. So what I'm going to do first Canada. is... Huh? Oh, uh, people now they're coming in from all over Australia, Canada, <laughs> and Southern Illinois. Are you just blown by in Southern Illinois? Yeah. We got a Southern Illinois. Montreal. Um, just stop me, babe. He says I talk too much, y'all, and that he can't. Ever Not get too word. much, but I can't. It, it's he hard to. It's hard to catch word. a break. Margarita from New Zealand, and here way out in East Texas. In East Texas. Karen. Yeah, um, a lot of people. Okay, so I'm going to do my test spot, all right? This is what I would do if y'all weren't watching. I'm out here starting to paint my friends thing. I'm going to do a test spot. So I kind of already think I'm going to bleed through, but I'm not sure. So let's just do a test spot. How long does it have to dry before painting? Uh, the primer, yep. when you prime, it just needs to be dry. It's just dry to touch. Uh, I think the jar might say an hour. Um, let's see what the actual directions say. Somebody said overnight. No. Um, apply digs about paint to small section, see if stain blew through. So apply second coat test again before painting the entire area. Blue through continue applying dry time which prior. Yeah, it just has to be dry. It just has to be dry. Um, by the time I start priming on one side of a piece and I go prime all the way around, by the time <clears> I'm <throat> done and get back, it's already dry and I can I can handle what, it. What would you do if you run out of fluff? Could you mix some other Dixie Bell colors? Oh, goodness gracious. To get the exact match of fluff, uh, I don't know. That'd I guess tough. you could do cotton mm -hmm. with a little tiny bit of gray in it if you wanted to, maybe, but I don't have a recipe for fluff. I don't. I don't have that. I'd order another can. Order another jar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. Okay, so don't be confused, guys. I know we've talked a lot about primers, but we're going to back it up a little bit. This is fluff. This is my paint. I'm doing a test strip. I'm not doing primer. This is my paint, all right? This is fluff. Got a little bit of it here, and I'm just gonna paint it right here. I'm not using a primer, because I'm just gonna see. Let's just see, do we need primer or not? And you don't always know immediately. It doesn't always show up immediately. Sometimes it does. I'm using my chip brushes right now, so I'm not getting a, you know, like a super great finish. I'm painting right over my hinges, by the way. Kathy said she needs it now. Oh, she needs it now. Oh, no, Kathy. I, am, I have no idea, girl. I mean, it's still so very white. It, they FedEx. say it has great undertones. Maybe add a little bit of, I don't know, maybe like driftwood to it maybe or something. I don't know, girl. All right. So there we go. Now, do I have bleed through immediately? Nope, I don't. Do I start to see like some dingy or yellow? No, I don't. But I'm going to make sure you might lose them. If we move out here, we lose them. Uh, it's hard to see on whites. You really seriously might lose up. No, I won't lose up. <laughs> I'm going slow. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to take a, uh, my brush and I'm going to do, uh, do another spot for, there's a reason. There's a reason for this. And it's also good to test it in different areas. Okay, so let's do another little test spot over here. There we go. And I'm going to do another little test spot over here. Because we are going to do something that's going to make all the difference in the world for your future projects. And you're going to go, Tracy, what? Thank you for that information. Thank you for saving me. And the reason that I think doing test spots is so important, I paint with a lot of detail. I don't do a lot of one finish paints. I have a lot of detail. I do a lot of hand painting. 
uh, designs and I need to know if I need a primer or not because I don't want to have a painted design and then have bleed through happen and then I have to cover it up. Can you do paint blending on top of the boss as well? Yes. Shirley wants to know. Oh yeah, Bo all boss is going to do is block your bleed throughs, block your odor and really make you some seriously good adhesion for your paint and you can do whatever you would normally do on top of wood. You can do that with uh, on top of your boss as well. So yeah, good question. Okay, so you wanna to start to let this dry a little bit. I can see, you. I know you can't, you're gonna to have to take my word for it, white with the lights and the camera never shows well on camera. White is the, it's, it's another reason I don't use white on lights because it just doesn't show very well. Uh, but I can see a little bit already that this is yellowing a little bit. Can you see that, Matt? Yep. Okay, Matt can see it. Maybe not this as much, is it? This one looks a little brighter, doesn't it? Uh, yes. This one's it a does. little brighter. Okay, so Matt's my witness. This one looks pretty pure still, and this one looks a little yellow for whatever reason, and that's why you need to do it in different spots. If it's going to yellow in one spot, the whole thing needs to be primed. You cannot go around and pick your spot where it's going to bleed through or not. The other thing is, is you want to get it good and dry before you do what's going to be like the truth serum here in a second, okay? So this is a heat gun. I'm going to turn it, oh man, I'm going to turn it up, turn it up on high heat, and I'm just going to get my paint dry here. Just going to get it good and dry. Dixie Belle Chalk Mineral Paint dries in about 20 minutes uh, to touch, not cured. There's a difference between dry and cured. Did you say to sand it first? Ann wants to know. No. I very, very rarely sand my pieces. You really don't Thank need to. Thank God. Oh, I know what I was going to tell you. So earlier I was like, oh, do I use slick stick because it's kind of slippery? No, you don't need to use slick stick on wood. You don't need to use slick stick on wood. Unless, unless it's like an Ikea piece. Those are the worst. Those need slick stick. Another Dix one is Bombay and Company. Bombay and Company, they bake something into their final finish that is horrible for paint to stick to. Okay, Dixie Bell brushes. Synthetic and the mini is really good. Yes, who's saying that? Dixie Bell. Oh, Dixie Bell. Someone must have asked a brush question. Thanks. Thank you, Dixie Bell. Uh, Dixie Bell synthetic brushes are my favorite. I don't even think I brought any here today because I wasn't working on like a furniture finish. We are actually just doing some samples for bleed through. So I brought all of my Dixie Bell uh, chip brushes. So Kathleen's a first time painter and wants to thank you for, for the lesson. Oh, yay, Kathleen. Welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. I really am. I'm so glad you're here. Um, this is just one of the cheap uh, brushes that they have. You can buy a set of six, I think, or something like that. This is a normal chip brush. This is like a chip brush you would get at Home Depot or Dixie Bell sells them as well. Uh, this is called a premium chip brush. What is it? Oh, I was just going to say Janice wants to know. She's going to she's going to paint over a high gloss painted piece. Uh -huh. uh, go boss or slick stick? Boss. Boss. I what guess. about slick stick if a piece has been varnished? Kathy Mingus Powell wants to know. I still think boss. I, slick stick is made for uh, like for mica, tile, oh. glass, metal. D one. Dixie Bell saying go slick stick. Oh, really? For which part? Be careful, uh, you're scaring me. High gloss painted piece. Really? I think you could, okay. I, it wouldn't hurt to go either way. I think you can scuff <clears> that. I think you can just scuff it up with a, a scuff it with a sanding block um, or a piece of sandpaper or a sander, and then you could boss it, or you could slick stick to it. Is it going to hurt? I mean, either way, is it going to hurt? Okay, this is the premium chip brush. Big difference, big difference. And what these premium chip brushes, you guys, are amazing. Look how old this premium chip brush is. I've had this forever, and it really, really holds up. Okay, so these are dry. Dry to touch, I've heated them, they're dry. This one's still a little bit more yellow. So this is what happens. If you don't have bleed through immediately, guess when you will get bleed through if you're going to get it? You're gonna get it when you're through with your project and you're ready to put your top coat on it. That is the scientific experiment that will usually bring through wood tannins from beneath your paint. Wood tannins are inside the wood. You paint your piece with chalk, chalk paint, uh, chalk mineral paint, Dixie Bell's chalk mineral paint. Chalk mineral paint is an open product. It's very open. It's like having open pores in your skin. It's open. It's like a sponge. It's, uh, 
It's open to whatever is underneath there. If you put a top coat on it, Dixie Bell, one of Dixie Bell's uh, polycrylic top coats, the water-based top coats that we have, there is um, some sort of, uh, what is it called, like osmo by osmosis or something like, not osmosis, but what's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, I think it's osmosis. Some sort of scientific reasoning that the whatever is in the water-based water -based product draws the wood tannins out of the wood. I think it's the water, but it draws the wood tannins out of the wood and it comes through the chalk paint and to the surface. So you've painted a beautiful piece and it's got black and white checks all in all of the center panels and on the drawers, they're black and white stripes and they're so pretty and they've got the black and white stripes. And then you go and you seal it, it's done. You've spent all these hours on it, you put your top coat on it and it's just, it sucks those tannins through that beautifully white stripe drawer and it'll show up. Does somebody have a uh, question? Kathy, yes. Yes, Kathy, you do need boss for a varnished piece, correct? Yes, I would put... She's just verified. Yes, I would put boss. Yes, it wouldn't hurt you to put slick stick. The thing is, though, guys, slick stick does not... It's not a blocking primer. Slick stick is not going to block uh, bleed through or um, stop odors and stains like that. Slick stick is just an adhesive. It's got a, it's a something that you put on that, that dries with a lot of tooth. It's gonna <clears throat> really hold on to the glass or that super shiny metal. It's gonna really hold on to it and then it's gonna provide tooth for your paint to sit on top of and, and grab hold of. <clears throat> so that's what it does. Um, okay, so here we go. This is my favorite top coat. It's clear top coat um, and satin. Now, clear top coat looks like white. When you go to get it out of the jar, it's gonna look white. See it on my brush? It looks white, but it's not. It'll dry and it'll dry clear. So this is the truth right here. Sometimes it'll show up immediately, sometimes it won't. You go to bed, you get up the next morning, you come out and it'll be pink, pinky, like have pinky stains in the corners or yellowy stains have come through. That's when it might happen or it might happen pretty quick. So I'm gonna put this on and we'll see what happens. This is my top coat, water-based top coat. It's my favorite top coat. I love it so much. And let's see what happens. Now remember, if I get bleed through, then I know that I need to go back and prime my entire piece because I don't want to have bleed through in the end because this is going to be a white piece. All right, so that one looks pretty good actually. So put some on here and we'll see what happens. I may not be, I may not be getting any bleed through. Yep, I am. I'm getting it, you can see it right there. You can start to see some of it come through. Y'all won't be able to see it, but I am getting some. So we're gonna talk through some of this for, for just a minute. So what are your options then? If this is gonna happen, you prime it, right? Okay, so let's say you want to start your project and you don't have any primer and you don't have time to go to a retailer and find it. You don't have time to order it online. You've got your paint and you're ready to get started. Your option is, we're gonna see what happens here. We're gonna let this um, sit and we're just gonna see what happens. Uh, your option is you can seal with one of the many other options that Dixie Bell provides you and that won't pull through, bleed through. One of those is their wax. You can use their wax. Why are you making that face? I'm not. <clears throat> I'm trying to hold back a sneeze. Oh, you are? Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so we've got Dixie Bell's wax. And let's talk about this. So this is gonna be a white piece. So what are our options? We could use a clear spray wax. This won't, you can put this on your product and you pretty much aren't gonna get yourself bleed through. It's gonna soak right into that porous chalk paint. It's gonna seal the chalk paint. It's not gonna cause that reaction that top coats might. Do you have something? Uh, Connie Smith Oliver wants to know if you can use gray boss under white. Yes, you sure can. You can use gray boss under white. The only thing is, Connie, <clears> if you're gonna, like this piece is gonna be distressed, heavily sanded. So I don't wanna use gray boss under it because then when I sand back my white, it's gonna leave a, it's gonna have a gray ring my primer is gonna show in gray. So that's why I'm not gonna do it. But if you're gonna do a clean piece and not sand it back, yes, Gray Boss works great under white. Gray Boss works great under everything. I, it's my favorite primer. So you could use the spray. You can spray it right in. You can open the lid, pour it into a bowl, and you can just brush it right over your paint. It's gonna give your paint a very soft, uh, soft, still leave, leaves that very kind of chalky feel, super soft. Okay, the other option is, how about dusting wax and white? Why not use a white wax? 
if it's going to be on white paint, it's just going to be you, uh, the wax, you just wipe it, you brush it on, kind of rub it in, um, let it sit for about 15 minutes or so, come back with a rag and buff off excess. When I say buff, what you mean by that is you'll feel it before you buff it and you can feel the wax. It's pasty feeling. It feels waxy. If you buff it with a white rag, kind of rub that, all you're doing is rubbing off the excess and then it should feel very smooth and velvety. White wax over white paint instead of a clear top coat would be an option. Another option would be clear wax. For some reason, I'm out of clear wax. I don't know why, um, but I do have Big Mama's Butter and uh, or Butter, Big Mama's Butter, and I could use that in the unscented or the in any of the scented ones. These were great. They're very, very, uh, they're like butter. They're very creamy, super easy to apply. They soak right into your paint. They give you a beautiful finish. Same thing, let them sit for a little bit, come back and buff it back, buff off the excess. This is amazing over um, a very cottagey, simple, organic, natural, shabby chic finish. This would work really well. The other thing that Dixie Belle has is hemp oil, and it's very natural. Oh, by the way, this is all natural. This has got coconut, the Big Mama's Butter has coconut oil. Um, what else is in here? I love this stuff. Oh, I forgot. Dixie Belle, are you on? Tell me what the other one is. It's coconut oil. It's my favorite oil. That's why I know that. And then there's another oil as well. It has three different um, natural products in here. Uh, Maureen wants to know, would you wax finished product of furniture as well as a top coat? You can do that. You can do that. Like you could put gator hide over a wax finish if you wanted to make it a little bit more hardy. You can do that, but you need to let your wax dry for at least three days. You need to wait 72 hours. You need to have buffed it completely back so all of the excess is removed. And then you need to wait 72 hours before you apply a top coat on top of any of the waxes. And Jeanette wants to know, would the butter yellow the white? No, it'll just soak right in. You can see it looks, it's really not yellow in the can. It's more of just like a natural creamy looks color. Looks like Vaseline kind yeah, of. Yeah, it's kind of like the cup, but it just smooths out completely clear. And you can use this on your skin. It's at very all, it's very all natural. It's amazing stuff. Um, I, I actually uh, freshen up my kitchen cabinets with this right here. Um, so hemp oil is another option that you could use and uh, you don't really have to worry so much about bleed through on that either. So I'm gonna tell you that I'm gonna prime my piece. My piece is gonna get primed. I'm gonna prime it in white. I'm priming it in white. This one over here looks pretty pure. What do you think, Matt? I mean, uh, it's got some yellow coming through. Yeah, it's got some yellow coming through. We I do know, have a question I real fast. I see that, but this one has a lot of yellow coming through. Uh, Wendy Lou wants to know, can I use another top coat besides Gator Hide on no pain gel stain? Uh, something that would be as protective as Gator Hide. Something that we don't I know have. it wouldn't be a DB product, but I'd always get streaks with Gator Hide. Oh, mm, I honestly, to me, Gator Hide's the only product that I've used that's hardy like that. I've always only used just like your standard top coats. So when I started working with Dixie Bell, they're the first ones who came out with that, uh, uh, you know, it's not just water resistant, it's actually water repellent. So it's the only hardy top coat that I've ever worked with. So I'm not the right person to ask that question. Kathy wants to know, what'd you say that you used on your kitchen cabinets? Was that the butter? Yeah, I used the butter. Mm -hmm. I used the, the um, orange scented one, the one that smells like orange. Love it. This one is no, this one doesn't have any scent on it. Oh, this is the white. Yeah. Yeah, and I put it on my skin. <laughs> what Dixie Bell was saying to use the slick stick. Um, for which? Uh, instead of. Gator hide. Gator hide, I guess. Oh no! I, she, they must be answering something else because that wouldn't work. Oh okay. The slick can, stick is. Can you use a paint as a primer to determine uh, bleed through? Can you use paint as a primer? Instead of a primer. Instead of a primer. Um, the paint, the, the chalk mineral paint is going to be, it's porous, so it will not work as a primer. It's porous. It's going to let any bleed through, through it. So we are, we're getting very yellow here. Let me actually put another coat of white right next to it so that you can see. Let me put a fresh coat of white. I don't know. Hopefully you'll be able to see this. Um, let's put it right here. Oh, that was for the cabinet question. Sorry. Oh, gotcha. See that? You yep. see how very, very, very white this is? Yeah. And this is turning yellow. So that's bleed through. That's not a color I like. It looks dingy. It's not fresh. This is not 
Turtle Creek Lane bright white for my pink and green and blue dishes. Um, that's dingy, been around a long time. So it's gonna get primed. I'm gonna prime the whole thing and I could prime it in clear, but I'm just not gonna take the chance. I'm gonna go ahead and prime it in boss white and, um, and then I'll be covering the entire thing in fluff. So that is my lesson. I hope that that helps you. We covered a lot of product, um, but I think that by putting that uh, top coat on there, you can see the difference between, now this is, this is already starting to dry up. So you see what the top coat brings through if you've got a bleeder. Uh, Bonnie wanted to know if you could just do a quick run through of what you've done so far. Basically, you're just showing the difference in primers, correct? Uh, I'm, I'm talking about bleed through, basically. How to do test spots. I've just done test spots on this. This is a, a tall, early American cabinet that I cleaned with our light lightning product and got all of this off of it, even though it was spotless. It was spotless. But once I put white lightning on there and it started to eat, up, eat off what was on the surface, I had a feeling I had a bleed through. Um, and so I'm doing test spots and I felt like it's something that we don't talk about. We don't show this part. This is very boring. We'd rather get on here and show you, you know, beautiful painting techniques. Um, but this needs to be shown. I mean, we need to know how to do your own test spots. And doing a test spot is much more than just putting paint on and looking at it and go, oh, well, look, it didn't bleed through. Yeah, it didn't bleed through because you haven't put your top coat on there yet. So what are you going to do with the hinges? Are you going to remove them and paint them? No, I'm painting them. Mm -mm. The, all, the, all the cabinets that my client sent me all have that. You know, when you do that super shabby chic look, you guys, like they always paint right over and all the ones that she sent me have the same look. They've just painted over the hinges. What else? Uh, I missed one. Dixie Bell picked it up for me. Okay. They're so awesome. Thank you, Dixie Bell. And, uh... That's it. Nobody's. That's it. Just people coming. All right, we're good. We have gone seven. Uh, seven. We've gone forty minutes. Thank you, baby. You did great tonight. Mm, you're welcome. Thank you. Um. So that's it, y'all. I'm gonna be working on this for uh, I don't know, probably a good week, probably. Um. Uh, off and on. Um. I don't know why I'm spreading that out. I just don't want any lumps. I don't want to have to sand. <laughs> I don't want it to sand off any lumps. I want to make sure this is nice and smooth. I'm literally, so my paint's here, my top coat's here. I'm going to boss right over it. I can boss right over what I've done here. Uh, Shane's wondering what, what about tinting the boss with some of the paint color you'll be using? You can do that. Yes, absolutely. Um, it, when, yeah, I think idea. he's talking about not, or she's talking about not having, uh, so that you don't get that halo effect. So let's say you're painting, um, yeah. you're painting a peacock, peacock blue, super bold, harsh, not harsh. I love peacock. It's one of my favorite colors, but you know, it's like a, it's like an in your face turquoise. Um, and gray does, you know, gray's not going to match that. White's not going to match that. So I know I'm answering your question. <laughs> I know Dixie Bell <laughs> answered it. <laughs> they did? So yes, you can put, um, peacock in your boss a little bit and tint it so you kind of have at least kind of a tone on tone that way if you sand it back because that's where that's the important part when you sand back the paint if you're you could this is going to be heavily distressed then uh you wouldn't have that white halo can that's, you boss over wax can you boss it yes you can as long as the wax has dried and you know doesn't feel tacky you've removed all of the excess and you've let it dry um, if that, if you've changed your mind, you don't like it, give it a good 72 hours, let it really set up and dry. And then you can start over. You can boss right over it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Are we good? I think that's we it. had a good 45 minutes of good, <clears throat> healthy distraction here from the goings on in the world. And I love it. Thank you guys for joining me. Thank you for being here. I really thought I might get on tonight. No one would be here tonight. Um, so I appreciate you guys always being here every single Wednesday night. I will be back next Wednesday night. Um, maybe we'll be working on this some more. Maybe we'll go through the distressing part. I've never distressed with you guys ever. I don't distress hardly ever, to be honest. Um, so maybe we'll go through some artistic distressing. I always call it artfully distressed. Uh, it'll be loud, but the sander, is that something y'all would like? Would you like to see that? So, uh, what process do I use uh, for get, whoops, uh, to get my pieces to paint the color? So, what processes do I use for get my pieces to paint the color? 
Oh, Matt read your, your statement, but he doesn't quite understand. He read your question, but he doesn't understand it. What process do I use? What process do I use for getting my piece to paint the color? For know. getting my piece to paint the color. I don't know what you're asking. I'm sorry. Sorry, Bonnie. Oh, it's Bonnie. I'm yeah, sorry. and now I've lost the question. Uh, are you going to your page after this? Yes, we'll go over there for a little bit. We sure will. We won't stay long. We've been kind of keeping a short over there, but we sure will. We'll pop over. So um, I think that's it, you guys. Dixie Bell, thank you for having me. I hope you'll learn something tonight. Um, hit that share button before you go. If you did, I would love that. And um, uh, stay healthy. All right, we'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye, -bye.